So we have the college algebra, um, algebra review. So I'll go over this with you. So for 1A, we're going to follow order of operations. So order of operations tells us to do inside parentheses first. So this will give us 1 minus 2. And then for the 3 minus 5, that gives us a negative 2 plus 2. And I'm going to leave it in parentheses because these parentheses are telling us to multiply when it's just touching parentheses. So it's really tempting to do the 1 minus 2 out front, but order of operations tells us to do parentheses, exponents, multiplication and division are actually grouped together, and then addition and subtraction are grouped together. So next we're going to multiply. So we're going to get 1, we're going to get minus 2 times negative 2 is a negative 4, plus 2. So we actually have two negative signs. We have one from the subtraction and one from the multiplication. And so the double negative minus negative 4 turns into plus 4. So we get 1 plus 4 plus 2. And if you add those up, you get 7. So B, we'll follow PEMDAS again. Um, we're going to treat the square root as parentheses, and we're going to treat the top of the um, fraction as parentheses. These are just versions of parentheses because they're groupings. So we'll do those first. So if I wanted to do 5 squared minus 4, that would be 25 minus 4, or that would be 21. So we're going to get 21 over 7, and then 11 minus 2 is 9. So then we're going to get the square root of 9. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do, finish each of these individually, and then subtraction will come at the very end. Um, so 21 over 7 is similar to division, so that would be grouped with division. Square root of 9 is just kind of its own grouping, so we'll take care of that as well. So we're going to get 21 divided by 7 is 3, and then the square root of 9 happens to also be 3, and then 3 minus 3 is 0. Subtraction at the end. All right, and then fractions. Um, if we don't remember fractions, we need to find the LCD. The LCD is a number that both 3 and 7 go into. So 3, 6, 9. This is something you might do in your head. Listing out things 3 goes into. And then 7 goes into 7, 14, 21, and so on. And so they both go into 21. So that's our LCD. So 3 times what is 21? 3 times 7 is 21. So I multiply top and bottom by 7. Um, same with the next one. 7 times what is 21? 7 times 3 is 21, so then I also multiply the top by 3. And so we get 14 over 21, 2 times 7 over 3 times 7, and then we get minus 4 times 3 is 12 over 21, and then we just subtract the top, we get 2, and then the bottom stays the same for LCD. So 2 over 21. And then D and E are similar but different. Um, so D is a square root, E is a cube root. It's a similar process, but slightly different. Um, so for a square root, we look for perfect squares. So what goes into 72? I think we could rewrite it as 36 times 2. And we like 36 because we know the square root of 36. The square root of 36 is 6, and that's because 6 times 6 is 36. We don't know the square root of 2, so it just stays a 6 root 2, and this is considered a perfect square. The cube root is a little trickier, um, so we could do a similar thought process. I just don't know perfect cubes as much, so sometimes I do the factor trees. Um, so we're looking for, like, what goes into 72? Um, anything. 9 and 8, and then 9 is 3 and 3, and then the factor tree we stop at prime numbers. Nothing else goes into 3 other than 3. Numbers go into 8, so 8 would be 2 times 4, and then nothing goes into 2, so we stop, but then 4 could be 2 and 2, so we keep going. So instead of writing 36 times 2, we'll write 3 times 3 times 2 times 2 times 2. And we could have done this in part D as well, and we would look for pairs in D, because pairs are squared, but in this one we're going to look for triples, because that would be cubed. So two, three twos. 
So I'm gonna put the three and the three together, which make nine, and then the three twos would be the same as two cubed. And so triples cancel out. These cancel each other out, and then we get two cube root nine. And the, you could have done doubles in this one. So it was still 72, so it's still three, three, two, two, two. But if I did doubles, the square root of three times three is three squared, which gives me three, right? Two times two is two squared, so those cancel out and give me two. And then there's one two left over, and that's still six root two. Just a different way of looking at it. Let's um, simplify some expressions, and then you can always pause and come back to this if you're still working on the other ones. So anytime we have parentheses with a power, it means everything in the parentheses gets the power. So we're gonna have three x y squared, and then all of those are gonna get the two power. And then y squared squared is gonna be a power to a power. And then on the bottom, there are no parentheses or powers, so I'm just gonna leave the bottom as is. And we'll simplify a little and see where this goes. So three squared is nine, x squared is x squared, and then these we're gonna multiply, we get y to the fourth. All over three x squared, y to the fifth. And then we'll just simplify the things that go together. So nine over three gives me three, x over x and x squared over x squared cancel each other out. And then with the y's, I have four on top and five on the bottom, so that means there's one left over on the bottom. There's one more on the top. We could think of it as y, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, right? So four of them cancel and one is left over. Um, so pause if you need to, I'm gonna keep going. Um, negative powers tell us to flip it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute this power like I did in the previous example, and then if we have any negative powers left over, we're going to flip them upside down. So right now, everything gets the power because the parentheses are on the top and the bottom. So I'm going to write everything out, make room to add the power. And so everything is going to get the power of negative 2. So 6 to the negative 2 means flip it upside down. Um, a to the, uh, we'll come back to the 6. Let's do the A first. A to the 2 to the negative 2, we multiply power, so it's going to be A to the negative 4. B is going to become a positive 2 power because it's negative 1 times negative 2. The bottom, we'll leave the 4 for now. A becomes A squared negative one times negative two, and then B becomes negative two. And then negative powers tell us to do the reciprocal. So like three to the negative one means one third. Three to the negative two means one over three squared. And then if we, if we had the opposite, one over three to the negative one, it means three to the one. You just flip it to the top or bottom. So we're gonna move all the ones that have negative powers. So b squared I'm going to leave on top, a squared I'm going to leave on bottom, and then 6 squared is going to move to the bottom, and 4 squared is going to move to the top. So when you move it, it turns into a positive power. a is going to be a to the fourth on the bottom, and then b is going to be b squared on top. And then we can simplify this a bit. So 4 squared is 16. b squared and b squared, this is when we add powers. So it would be b to the fourth. We get 36, and then this is again when we add powers, so we get a to the sixth. So multiplying powers is when we have parentheses like that. Adding powers is when we have two different terms. And then the only other thing I notice is a and b are different letters, so we're going to leave those alone, but 16 and 36 are both divisible by 4. So we can simplify the fraction a little. So we're going to get 4b to the 4th, 16 divided by 4 is 4, 36 divided by 4 is 9, 
a to the sixth, and that'll be our final answer. All right, let's do C and D, and then we'll do the rest in another video. So C, we're gonna do what we did in that last problem, but then it's gonna have some extra steps because there's two of them. So what goes into 24? Um, we get, I think, let me think, three and eight. So three, we're done. Eight would be two and four. Four is two and two. So 24 is two, 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 three. Try to do 81 without me, but if you need it, 81, I can think of nine and nine, and then both of those will keep going. Three, 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 three. So four threes. All right, I'm gonna just get this out of the way. And again, this is a cube root, so we're gonna look for triples. So I see three twos, and then the other one I see three threes. And then both of them happen to have a three left over. So the cube root of two times two times two is just two. Um, they're the opposites of each other. So the long way of thinking of it is it's two cubed. So it's the cube root of two cubed times the cube root of three. The cube root of three cubed minus times the cube root of three. And these like the third power and a cube root cancel each other out. So we get two cube root three, and then we get three cube root three. And these are considered like terms. It's kind of like having two X minus three X or two Y minus three Y. They just both happen to be cube roots. So we'll do two minus three, which is negative one, times the cube root of three. So just negative cube root three. It's called a like term. All right, and then this last one, Pause if you need more time. I'm just gonna do this last one and we'll come back to the other problems later. This is called rationalizing a denominator. We don't like square roots on the bottom. And we rationalize by multiplying by like the opposite. It's called a conjugate. So we take the same thing, but with a plus sign. And I'll show you why that works. So the top, there's not much to do. It's just one times that. The bottom, we're gonna go ahead and multiply it out. So it's two minus root three times two plus root three. And let's see what happens. There's a reason we chose this. So two times two is four, minus two root three plus two root three. And then the square root of three times the square root of three is three. And then it's just negative because of the negative sign. And what's cool is those middle terms cancel out. So there's no more weird square roots. So it's just four minus three or one. So that's it. The final answer is just two plus root three. So by doing rationalizing the denominator, it usually makes the denominator not have weird numbers anymore.